As I am learning to use my gel press, I am experimenting with different techniques, different ways to use the product to create different results. And one of the things that has intrigued me is creating layer upon layer on the press prior to pulling the print. So in this video, I will be utilizing stencils. I will be utilizing some mark making product or trash, if you will, to create some different layers that will help us achieve some various results as we begin to pull from the press. My name is Peg and I of course call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. And I invite you to subscribe to my channel and of course that notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. For this first pull I have laid down some yellow ochre and this pattern I put down with a rug pad and I am just illustrating that uh, once again. The yellow ochre that was left on my brayer, I am pushing over off onto this smaller gel plate or gel press just so I don't waste the paint. So I'm going to be working with two different sizes here. Now the little smaller gel press for the texture, I've pulled out this onion bag and I'm just randomly brayering that pattern into that yellow ochre that I have put on a very light coat onto the gel press. So it's a small amount of paint, very thin coat, and now I'm just going to allow that to dry to the touch. And as that begins to dry, I'm taking the brayer very lightly, going back over the gel presses just to break up that pattern. And I also laid a stencil down on the smaller one and just ran over the stencil with my brayer. The baby wipe, I'm removing just a little bit more ink with that with that baby wipe. I don't want a true structured pattern in the background. This is the cold gray paint, and I am putting this on. I thought I would use a brayer to do that, but I have decided that it is easier with these little cosmetic cosmetic pads. So I'm just using some of those to stencil on top of that dried yellow ochre. Keeping in mind when you're putting these colors down, the first color that you put down will be your top color. So we're going from light to dark. Now I kind of break that concept up here because I'm using this dark white. It's almost a buff color and laying that down now. I'm going to go back this next weekend and do this whole process over and put this white down first instead of the third color. I'm just stenciling some on and now I'm removing color. So I'm kind of reverse stenciling there. You can do it once more. So I pat down some color, put the stencil over the top, take my baby wipe and wipe that ink out throughout that stencil. So it just gives kind of a reverse pattern. And now that we have these patterns all down, I want to finalize this with a um, dark color. I'm just fanning it there to make sure that it is dry to the touch. And I'm laying this overall stencil down. This is one of the new stencils I received from Stencil Girl. I love this stencil. And I apologize that I don't know what it's called, but it came in my monthly subscription. And I am utilizing raw umber and just stenciling right onto the gel press. So there's the final color. I'm going to do that on both. And I'm going to let that dry to the touch as well. For the color that I'm using to pull, I'm using titanium white, very light coat, and let's just see what we get. 
and do that on both. Ah, and it's ripping my paper a little bit, but I am happy with the way that the way that print works. So I think I let it dry a little too much before I pulled it. So let's try it once again. I'm going to lay this yellow ochre down one more time on both. I think I'll pull this piece of cardboard in as my first layer. And that's just, you know, a random piece of packaging. And I like the way that looks. I shall do the same thing that I did the first time and just kind of break that pattern up a bit with my brayer and allow that to dry to the touch. And when you saw me put the paint down the, the first time, that first coat, I worked that until it was a very even, fine layer. Now I'm just stenciling through with that cold gray. I'm going to use just a little different stencil over here on this small one. And now I will come back in. I'm going to set that aside for just a minute because I have some paint left over that I don't want to waste. And I use these sheets that I lay down on my desktop for other projects. And I have found that these make great wrapping paper. So I often will wrap gifts just in my little brayer sheets or scattered inks and paints and all kinds of stuff on there. It makes kind of interesting gift wrapping. So side note, back in with that uh, dark titanium white, it's that buff white. And I'm just going to stencil this around in a few places on the press. And I will do the same thing over on the smaller stencil as well. Only I'm going to center it on there and get a lot of, of this buff white in the center. So I'm going to utilize this little dot and add some dots on here. And now I'm just going to reverse those out on the small one like I did before. Just removing the ink. Back with that stencil and the raw umber. I'm just lightly tapping, lightly patting that down. <clears throat> we'll let that dry a little bit to the touch. I'm going with a different stencil over the for the background of this one. I'm just testing it to the touch. And on this one, I'm going to use the titanium white again. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of this iridescent white as well. Fine layer over the top. And I am going to pull this before I let it sit there and dry and see if we get a better pull. There we go. Without ripping the paper. So I'm happy with how that looks. I also think that there's enough paint left on here to get yet another pull. So I'm just spreading a little bit of that paint. Going to spread some of that leftover cold gray, some of that leftover iridescent white. There's the small one. And let's see what we get pulled from that. So I like the way that turned out as well. 
just, just clean these off. And now let's try some different colors. So I'm coming in with a rouge. And I like that pattern on that cardboard. So I'm going to utilize that once again. And you can probably see what a fine layer I've put down of paint. And now just playing with some stencil in a white pinkish mixture. Fanning it a little bit to get that dry to the touch. And I felt like the, the reason I stopped there for a second, I didn't feel like I had that bottom layer dry enough. And I was picking up some of that, that color when I stenciled. So that's why I took a little time there. Now I'm just removing color on that stencil. I just removed it with a with a baby wipe. I'm going to try to get this dry to the touch. Fanning it a little bit. Choosing the next stencil. trying a couple. Have it really yeah. firmly decided on which one to use. Let's just add some additional color here. And that's that buff white once again. I kind of got in a rut here of the color sequence of how I laid these colors down. Let's just see how this turns out. This is a stained glass stencil, and I am utilizing a violet. And that's going to be my dark color and my, my bottom color. And let's, we'll just see how this works. This is all experimentation for me because I have not really done a lot of this. So I'm learning as I go. And I just thought it would be fun to take you along with me in the process and see if we couldn't learn together, pick up some new techniques, some new tricks of the trade here with the gel press. And that's what this whole gel press series is about, is just finding out new techniques, new things to use on the press. And I have a project in mind for all of these papers that I'm creating. I'm kind of trying to get started on some gifts for the holidays. And I have some composition books that I want to create a interesting cover for that I thought would make nice gifts over the holidays. So that's what I have these planned for. So we saw that pull. Let's try this once again. I'm going down with that whiter color first. And just trying to pull the remainder of the paint that was left on my press after that last pull. 
because I think if you don't get it, if it doesn't pull off clean, there, there's a lot of ghost print that you can pull up after the fact and create some more interest by just adding a little extra paint here and there. So that is what I am doing with this one. And now I'm laying down the iridescent white. And let's see what kind of image we get from just cleaning the press. And I like that a lot. I'm going to try to get the rest of it up with this gray. And I like that a lot as well. So I'm kind of liking these remnant prints better than the, than the original ones. I just think they have a lot of possibilities, a lot of things that you can do with them. So this is, this is what I, I am doing to clean all of the paint off of that press, just trying to re-wet it with different colors paints until I get the press pulled to a clean press. So let's get this final one done. And once again, I'm trying to get rid of my leftover paint on my little scrap paper here underneath. And this I think is good and dry now. So let's lay down some iridescent white and see what kind of pull we get here. Yeah. Not fabulous, but workable. Let's try it once again. I just don't think it was wet enough. A little better. And there's still paint. So I'm going to try to pull it with a dark color and see what happens. Let's just add some stenciling to make that look a little more interesting. Oh, and I'm not unhappy with that. Let's keep going until we we get a a clear press. I actually put a clean clean paper on. Let's see what we get from this final. You know, it's it's interesting with the press because, you know, I started out very structured and I was going to lay down three or four colors. And as I got to the end, and, and I left this in because I I just felt like there was, was something of value here in when your whole idea kind of falls apart at the very beginning or you are trying just to get your press cleaned off and get all of the paint off of it, the different pulls that you can can create with just the remnants of all the paint that is left on that press after you have completed that structured work. I hope that makes sense. But I thought about taking all of this out and and just really working on that initial layered print and letting it go there. But some of my best prints came from this part. So why not? And this is probably why I should be doing a live so we could be talking through this as I was doing it, but I just haven't worked up the courage to do that yet. And that one I love. And it has no structure, no rhyme or reason, no nothing, just random. So let's just take a look at, well, let's do one more. 
Surely we'll get this press clean here. Back with my onion skin and random little baster. Let's see. Oh, that's not bad either. Let's try it with a little bit darker. This is that violet. Pull out that rug pad once again. And let's just take a look at, at what comes up there. I still have a lot of paint left on this press. I'm coming in with some black. Let's just add some marks on some of our prints. I think we'll call this gel press meanderings. These are all of the prints that we came up with during this little meandering <laughs> about on the gel press. And I think there's some pretty decent ones. This is, um, Amanda sent this to me in a swab. And it is a little piece of acrylic that you can lay over and kind of choose where you're going to cut your ATC from. And as I'm looking at these prints, I thought these would make great backgrounds on ATCs. And this was a very, very cool thing that I received in that swamp. And, and I'm very thankful for that because it, it worked out. It worked out great. So I'm going to give up and clean my gel press with a baby wipe and wipe it off with a t-shirt. Here are once again all of those prints that we received out of this process. So let's just take a look once again of the prints that we received. This, These were the yellow ochre, the cold gray, and the raw umber and white. And these are some of the violet, the gray, and these were some of the cleaning that I was receiving cleaning the press. And I think these had a little bit of interest as well. So this was in that initial stage where I was using all the stencils. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too rambly. But um, I appreciate you being here, and I always appreciate your comments. Thank you for those of you who have subscribed. And if you haven't, please do. I'll link the playlist for the gel press series right here. And I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.